you know, of course we're going to keep building on what we've established with regards to AI, and I'll be addressing some stuff about AI in my speech tonight. But also there are people uh, that don't get the kind of credits that they need, uh, people that are audio description, certain stunt people, uh, certain dancers, and I think that the time has come that producers accept that these people are in the performers union, they serve a very valid and important contribution. Uh, so, you know, there are many things that we had to uh, give up on, also uh, better uh, shooting circumstances for our background performers. Yeah, I mean, I, I was, uh, I think sometimes uh, prior to our strike, I think I sometimes felt like maybe people weren't that, uh, that conscious of the fact that we are all in a union together and that when we have problems with the business, which how things, with how things work, especially coming out of Me Too, during Me Too, I was like, I, I always had this feeling like, why are we not dealing with this as a union? Like, why is this not something that, and, or why are we not using each other more as a resource in terms of being members of a union? And I think if that, if that same sort of wave of political potential were to happen again, I think post-strike, maybe we would. And I think that's a good thing. That is a, there's a structural contradiction with our union, which is that there, the certain like top tier of actor, they don't need a union, they don't need an agent, they need a lawyer and a phone number, you know what I mean? Like, uh, but I think the truth is that even those actors are pretty committed to this union and people are really willing to stand together and I think they showed this summer that they're willing to forego some, forego work and, and income for a fairly long period of time in order to get a better deal for the sort of like members who work for scale. And that's, I mean, there's, there's nothing more beautiful than that. That's solidarity. Well, uh, well, for Maisel, I showed up to the audition and I forgot to put deodorant on and it was sweltering. It was New York. It was August or no, it was just a late, it was late September, but it was boiling still. And I sweat through the entire audition and they thought it was a choice. They were like, we really liked that touch of like, she works hard and she doesn't care. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that was intentional. Yeah. You. And look at where it got me. You know what? Listen, first of all, I thought uh, when we talked about the collaboration with Off White, I thought I should wear color because I'm in a room with a lot of actors. We're all, this is time for us to like show up a little bit more with a bit more color, not be austere. We're not in a business meeting. We're here to have fun. So I want it to look like a party. I want it to feel light and I want it to feel structured. And that's what we came up with. The PIN. Oh, yes. Uh, it's um, an organization called Artists for Cease Fire. And it's not a political organization, it's a humanitarian organization. Because uh, we're, you know, everyone uh, is trying to urge our leaders to, to really step up and and um, do more, to um, to stop, you know, the the killing of innocent civilians. That's really all it's about.